Hey guys, it's Dark here. Uh, 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 just let me complain. So, I fucking just hit the shit out of my microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so, today I actually have a lot of interesting stuff for you. A lot of ch chunk of news. And just let you guys know, this isn't lipstick. This is Gatorade. Now, no sponsor. Not sponsored at all. But today I also have a lot of amazing news. Why would I, I mean, like, for the Yu-Gi-Oh! world, my dog is a runner somewhere. Anyways, but I have a lot of amazing news for you guys. And... I'm just, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Let's start off with with some interesting tournament news stuff. Today, well, first, I want to tell you about uh, two things that happened earlier this week. Uh, 621.16, both of these ha were published on 621.16, um, and it is about Dragon Duel qualifiers. Yeah, I know, who cares? It's Dragon Duels. But still, it's just something that, you know, I want to talk about because, um, yeah, it's the South American uh, World Championship qualifier. Uh, Jaquin Rin Rinaldi and Alvaro Saborian win big at South American World Champion Qualifier and South American Dragon Duel. Okay, so Jaquin Rinaldi uh, delivered a clutch all the way. Final round, definitely with Dragon Slayer Performer Pal or Draco Pals, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, yeah, that's really about it uh, for that. And also with uh, Saborin, or Saborin, Al Al Alvaro? <laughs> Alvaro, he played, what did he play? It's not telling me what he played. Oh, he played Monarchs. That's what he played. Alvaro Saborin played Monarchs. And Jaquin, Jaquin it's, I don't really know how to sp pronounce your name, so if you're still watching this, you probably aren't. But if just in case you are, I'm very sorry that I'm pronouncing your name wrong. But... Jaquin played Draco Pals and Savarin, or no, Savarin. I just read, like, I just combined, combined, combined the two names together. Alvaro Savarin played Monarchs, which, yeah, he played that all the way through. And so they bought it on that one for the South American one. And for uh, just the qualifier for the main event and Dragon Tools, the winner is Zach Taylor. He won his Minerva, the XYZ Minerva, a PlayStation 4. And his invitation and paid travel to 2016 World Championship Qualifiers, or WCQ, which I'm pretty sure it is going to be, uh, what is it? It's going to be streamed uh, at the, you know, the Twitch, whatever. But, yeah, that's really about it. No, <laughs> no, he played, Jake played uh, Cosmos, Eel, Gross, uh, which... Who cares? Oh, well. <laughs> he played Cosmos. You know how I feel about Cosmos. Cosmos just bothers the hell out of me, and I'm never going to like him. Just, I'm never going to. I recently, recently picked up Monarchs, which I'll be doing a deck profile really soon. I have another deck profile planned before I do Monarchs, so stay tuned for that, which I'm very excited for, which I actually might record later today or, you know, I work on my game because I got that coming out soon. Um, but yes, a, uh, the prize cards for it will be Dark Lord prize cards. I don't know what they are, the Dark Lord prize cards are, but if you know what they are, go ahead and post in the comments below. And that's it for the, Kon the Konami news, uh, from the Konami website. Something that comes from Cyber Knight. I forgot the numbers are, are at the end of your shit. <laughs> they come from Cyber Knight's website, uh, Cyber Duelist, 8 whatever, Cyber Knight, whatever. But anyways, yes, so... I have two things about that are on his website. Definitely will post a link to the website. Um, it is on number S O S zero whatever Utopic Zexel. <laughs> Utopic Zexel. It is Shonen Jump promo. Now Utopic Zexel uh, is three number monsters with the same rank. It's also treated as a rank one at all times. You can also X Y Z summon this card by discarding one rank up spell or rank up magic normal spell card, then use then using a Utopia monster, you control as the XYZ monster and then the XYZ materials, all that other fun stuff. Uh, the XYZ summon cannot be negated. When XYZ summon, your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated. This card gains a thousand attack and defense for each XYZ material attached to it. Once returned during your opponent's turn, you can detach one XYZ material from this card. Uh, 
your opponent's cards and all effects cannot be activated. This is a quick effect. Its attack is question mark. So obviously you only get its effect or its attack and defense uh, from the XYZ materials attached to it. If you just straight up just use the Utopia, uh, I think it'll make things really interesting and it'll make the deck a lot better. Or it, make, it could make a Utopia deck viable or you could just run, you know, Utopia, call it a day. Um, so yeah, it's really about it on the card. I mean, this card seems really interesting to me. Uh... It's, I don't think it'll make a huge, huge difference to the way Zex or Utopia is played just for the fact that people don't really want to run the rank-up cards. So unless you build a rank-up deck or you're just running, uh, what are they called? Raid Raptors, which they run rank-up cards anyway. So, like I said, it's the only deck I really see it being played in at an all-time, like you for like there's a big chance people will play it, is Raid Raptors, which this card could make Raid Raptors pretty good. I mean, for the fact that they can play damn near any fucking XYZ at all. Anyone they want to. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, but what's really interesting is is that it takes three number cards, which is interesting uh, for the fact of n number cards aren't really, like, a thing. I mean, like, yeah, there's still number cards that people play, but it's not a big important thing where you see a lot of people talking about it. So that's just, that's just my take on the card. It's, it's an interesting card that I think will make a difference uh, in the way... Or that could make a big scene in Yu-Gi-Oh! But at the same time, I don't. I feel like it won't make that much of a difference when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about that comes from Cyber Knights or Cyber Duelists um, website is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Decks 2. Now, you had the Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Legendary Decks uh, 1, which has just showcased uh, three of Yu-Gi's decks. And that was throughout the entire his entire series or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's really about it. It's going to have the three Egyptian, playable Egyptian cards. It's going to have uh, Yu-Gi's deck that's based on Exodium. Joey's deck, which is based on Red Eyes. And Kaiba's deck based on Blue Eyes. Plus the three new cards. Eternal Soul, or Eternal Soul, Dark Burning Attack, and Dark Burning Magic. That sounds really interesting. Maybe I'll have to look into those cards later. But that's it for the Cyber Duelist website. Now we're going to move on to new packs that are coming out. We finally have some dates for the three very anticipated packs that are coming out. Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dark Side of Dimensions movie pack, which will come out July 22nd. I had to think for a second. And then we have uh, the Dark Illusions pack, which comes out August 5th. And we have the Dragons of Legend Unleashed, which is basically just a sequel to the Dragons of Legend uh, 1 and 2, uh, which comes out August 19th, which I'm very, very excited for the Dark Illusions pack and the Dragons of Legends pack, uh, just for the fact of Dragons of Illusions or <laughs> Dragons of Legends might have a Blue Eyes alternative dragon. I'm really hoping it does. If it doesn't come out in the Dark Side pack, it more than likely will come out in Dragons of Legend. If it doesn't come out in either of those packs, I don't know when we're going to see it. No idea when we're going to see it. But, yes, that is what I'm very ex excited for. Now, to m go more into depth about the dr Dimensions, uh, the Dark Side of Dimensions pack. Um, little side note that they also mention in here that the movie doesn't come out. It's not going to hit theaters till May of 2016. Or 2017, which is very, very depressing. Um, it's going to have, like I said, in a previous video, that I did, a previous uh, actual, <laughs> just let me complain, news... It's going to contain the blue, Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, the Buried Dragon, the Buried Magician Girl, Apple Magician Girl, and Cube Magician Girl. So cool, and plus also Cubic Beasts. Uh, I mentioned that before, um, but we finally have actual dates. Before there weren't like serious dates about it. Uh, but Dark Illusion Pack coming out August fifth. It's going to contain really cool, ma amazing stuff. If you've already bought the uh, what is it, the Shining Victories. A booster box where it comes with three packs and two promos. Uh, you already probably have uh, what is it? The Ebon, the Elemental Hero Core, the Escape Ghost, and the Magician's Robe. Uh, but here's some other cards it's also going to include. Um, it's going to include uh, powerful cards like Magician Navigation, uh, which summons Dark Magician from a hand and another Dark Spellcaster of your choice right from the deck. Uh, then it goes to negate spells enemies. Uh, also, uh, Dark Magician's uh, Dark Magical Circle, uh, the famous ring seal on Yugi's cards. Now, finally made into a spell card. So that's really cool. I've actually know nothing about the Dark Magical Circle. I really don't know much about the new Dark Magician support, uh, just because I don't like some dark. I don't like spellcasters that much, except for you know the pe Pendulum Magicians. Other than them, I'm not a big 
uh, spellcaster fan just for the fact of, and, you know, Magician Pendulums proves this, they rely too much on spells, which bother me. Um, yeah, you know, you could you could argue that they're pendulum monsters, but the effects of the pendulum monsters of the you know the magicians in the pendulum zone are pretty important, especially if you're running the new like the new the uh, the new build which includes Time Gazer or Time Breaker Magician. Um, that is a very important card to the deck, um, which helps keep the decks or the cards alive. So like I said, they rely a lot on spells, and that's what always deterred me. And the only reason why I feel like I can play Odd Eyes Magician. Um, because it's pendulum monsters, and I can look past the fact that they're spell monster cards. So it just helps me get over the fact that you know magicians or spellcasters still heavily run on spell and trap cards. Uh, but also it includes new monsters uh, for Dark Magician: uh, the Magician of Dark Illusion, Magician's Rope, Magician's Rod, and even the Tune Dark Magician, uh, which is really cool. And also meet the Metal Foes, the new psychic theme. Of fusion and pendulum monsters, which is really cool. Uh, I actually I would really suggest looking into them. Metal foes are really awesome, and also it includes some new some new stuff for what's called sub terror. They are colossal giants, living uh, made from living rock, and use a genetic stack <laughs> who use their gigantic stats and awesome effects in a never ending war against the hidden city of mysteries. Yes. That sounds really cool. Um, and also, uh, the Tyramids are living pyramids. These are also new archetypes. The Metal Foes, Subterra, uh, Tyramids, uh, and also Spiral seeks into the fray. Um, don't know what it's called for. What does Spiral stand for? Don't ask. It's a secret. But this set contains 100 cards, 48 commons, 20 rares, 14 super rares, 10 ultra rares, and 8 secret rares which is actually pretty standard for a basic pack. This is the sequel, or this is the counterpart to Shining Victories. You know, Shining Victories include a lot of Dragon and Blue Eyes support. Dark Illusions includes a lot of Blue Eyes and new archetypes as well, um, which I'm really excited for. I'm actually very excited because it comes with a lot of cool new stuff. Um, and now the Dragons of Legends Unleashed. It is a 73 card set, 53 Ultra Rares, 20 Secret Rares. You know, it's just like the other Dragons of Legends packs where it was like you know a bunch of supers and everything else um now <laughs> on to what is new about this pack it includes spanning all five Yu-Gi-Oh series uh so it's going to include a lot of new stuff from all sorts of different things uh it's going to include the new planetary monsters which have been around for a minute just no one really knew it because it's a reference to the manga series now in the manga series uh for gx uh, that's what i'm talking about the manga series for gx um, there is the planetary cards, which play a big, big part in the entire manga. Jaden has, you know, Terra, which is Earth. Um, and also the other ones are also talked about in there. Venus. Venus has actually been around for a while. Um, Jupiter has... I think Jupiter has been mentioned. Uh, there's another one. Uh, I think No, it's uh, it's Saturn. That's the one that exists. Venus, Saturn, and Earth have all existed. The, obviously, the elemental hero, Terra. Um, the I think it's a fairy monster which is known as Venus and uh what is it it is Saturn I can't remember what Saturn is I think he's a dark monster a dark lord I think it's like dark lord Saturn or something like that but anyway the three of them have existed um but now it's going to include more of the planetary monsters which is a cyber uh which is really cool you got the blazing Mars and the grand Jupiter finishing out the theme that started out in 2008 like I said they've existed but it's not been so big. But these blaze the maze the Blazing Mars and the Grand Jupiter. They are such big, big names in the fucking set because they're actually the the better ones that exist. Yeah, there's Terra, he's an elemental hero, but no one really plays him, uh or no one really talks about him for the fact that he is an elemental hero. Um and but Venus and Saturn, they are actually pretty weak. I mean Venus isn't half bad, but Blazing Mars and the Grand Jupiter are actually the more the better ones. So I'm really excited for that. Plus also Alexis Rhodes Cyber Angel Ritual Monsters, which was very, very fun to uh, learn about during the G uh, the GX series. Uh, now coming up from five Ds is the Scrum Force. <laughs> And Jack La more Jack Atlas has super tuner Red Nova monsters among others, which we might see. Uh, what is it? We might see that really amazing card called uh, what is it? The King Synchro, 
which is amazing. I love it. It's fucking awesome. If you have it, if you don't know what it is, definitely look into it. Um, but I have no idea what the Scrum Force is, <laughs> so I definitely suggest looking to. I definitely will. Um, and from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zack Solo, you will see new number cards, um, as well as the headliner, number 100 Numeron Dragon. Now, if you don't know about Numeron Dragon, Numeron Dragon is possibly the most broken of the number monsters, which is amazing. <laughs> it triples the power massively, increases attack, and convert all monsters on the field into spells or traps. Endlessly, and endlessly... <laughs> summon itself from the graveyard when you're attacked. So like I said, it is possibly the most broken number monster that exists. Number 100 Numeron Dragon. Definitely, definitely. If you have the YGO Pro for the computer, you will, I definitely suggest looking at this card and looking how fucking broken it is. I've known about this card for years. They've hinted at it, at like, you know, showing it in the show, Numeron Dragon, but they never really talked about it or, like, brought it up and actually made it a card. Uh, but Numeron Dragon is just, oh my god, just broken from all hell. And also from the latest Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V comes the Cardian Monsters. Cardian, based on the Japanese game, Han Hanafiduda. Hanafiduda? I, if I'm pronouncing that, I'm very sorry. But this theme contains cards that depict other cards. So basically, it's kind of like how the Evil Swarms were. How Evil Swarms kind of just took monsters from various different sets, used their effects, and made it broken to summon Ophion. <laughs> Which was very broken. But Cardians are essentially the same thing. They're taking cards from other sets and just making it just one giant awesome set. Um, hopefully, it makes it... Basically, it's, hopefully it's a better version of Evil Swarms. Which, Evil Swarms were amazing, but they slowly just, like, went downhill during that uh, format. Just because the Constellers were just stupid. Because everybody just said, oh, you want to play Evil Swarms? You want to play Ophion? Well, guess what? I'm playing Constellar, so now your Ophion does nothing. Now you have to summon out Bahamut and Ouroboros to actually do damage. Um, uh, and also, and finally, for the original fans, we have... Amazing dragon cards that are just coming out. <laughs> you have another chance to get out Tamias, Critias, and Hiramos, plus the fusion monster creations and the support cards. So each pack contains five cards, four ultras, one secret rare, which is awesome. <laughs> That's why there are 20 secret rares. Uh, That's just broken. <laughs> so hopefully you guys check out that. And one other thing that I want to talk about that is coming out is a new structure deck which I am so so excited for rise of the true dragon structure deck which comes out August 8th which is just makes Felgrand a deck and it comes out with gospel of the revival which we've been all waiting for holy crap this is just something that's just gonna make blue eyes at least a little more playable no draw so yeah it's just psh, no drawbacks just psh, play gospel of the revival fuck with it it comes with 36 commons, 2 ultra rares, 3 super rares, and a token card. I know nothing about like the new stuff. I just know Gospel of Revival comes back with a freaking amazing, um, amazing monster reborn for dragons. <laughs> Which is just, just awesome. It's just amazing. Well, that is it for the news. I really don't have anything to complain about because all the news that I have just presented to you guys is amazing new stuff that is just so highly anticipated for. Granted, we have to wait till August to get the you know the Dragons of Legends and the Dark Illusions, but oh well. And we also have to wait till next year to get the movie. Ugh. Pretty sure you can probably find it subbed probably sometime this year, but it's not going to hit theaters till next year, which is very depressing. But oh well. Um, but my question to pose to you, what are you excited for? Out of all the things I listed, what are you most excited for? Go ahead and post it in the comments below. And time for the outro. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like, share, and subscribe to my other videos. Uh, all the links to social media and the articles that I talked about, you know, the new packs, um, the new stuff from Cyber Duelist, and just everything in general are going to be in the description below. Thank you guys, have a wonderful, beautiful day thing or whatever, and don't forget, just let me complain. <laughs>